All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, and a special thanks to our team and to our professor, uh, Louise Rosen, for all of their hard work throughout this semester. My name is Grace, and today I'll be presenting to you our findings from a semester's work designing a renewable policy, a renewable energy policy implementation plan for Abu Dhabi. During the presentation today, we'll be going over the current landscape in Abu Dhabi. We'll look quickly at how we, how we approach this task, and then we'll delve into our findings covering both policy tools and more immediate areas for action that we've identified. So in order to understand the significance of our project, it's important to have a clear picture of what is happening in Abu Dhabi today, both politically and in terms of energy. Abu Dhabi is home to about 10% of the entire globe's oil reserves and about 60% of their GDP, or about 250 billion US dollars, comes from the export of these reserves. Because the country has been built so heavily on the export of this resource, the citizens are heavily accustomed to subsidized electricity and water rates. And to give you kind of an idea of how that might work, in the US, the average citizen pays about 12 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity, whereas in Abu Dhabi, nationals pay less than two cents. And so this really discourages conservation of those resources. However, country leadership has really recognized that there is risk in relying so heavily on one single source of revenue, especially in such a quickly changing energy landscape and with falling oil prices that we've seen recently. So in order to diversify their economy, they've begun to invest in renewable energy. Because of this, country leadership announced a goal that they would like to meet 7% of their electricity capacity by renewable energy by the year 2020. Now, the Abu Dhabi Quality and Conformity Council is a, an organization and an agency that regulates product and services and their quality throughout the emirate. And because of this, they are heavily invested in the energy sector, as well as in achieving this 7% goal. The Quality and Conformity Council then reached out to our team to help them design a policy implementation roadmap to help them meet the 7% goal. They also reached out to research scientists at Mazdar Institute, which is an Abu Dhabi state-funded university that focuses on developing clean energy and environmental solutions for the future. And their team is putting together a more technical analysis of the viability of different renewable energy technologies in Abu Dhabi, and this will complement our policy implementation. At the end of the project, the Quality and Conformity Council will be able to take our report to the highest political authority in Abu Dhabi, which is called the Executive Council. And the Executive Council will then be able to make a decision as how best to move forward with the project. Because Abu Dhabi is a constitutional monarchy, the Executive Council really has the necessary political authority to be able to implement and really mandate any policies or targets that we develop that, or that they decide to implement. The first step in our process was to conduct a thorough literature review both on the history of Abu Dhabi as well as on energy policy tools that are being used across the globe today. And we wanted to do this in order to evaluate what has worked and what hasn't so that we can best adapt these tools for success in Abu Dhabi. We also consulted with experts in the field to corroborate these findings. When we traveled to Abu Dhabi, we were able to meet with our client and our partner institute, as well as with many key stakeholders and government agencies. And they provided really important feedback on our preliminary findings. And often these viewpoints of different stakeholders were conflicting and revealed a lot of new data, which was difficult to balance, um, but we feel that it ultimately led to a much more thorough and complete final product. And we're also happy that we were able to interface with these agencies as we feel that having their buy-in will ultimately give our report a lot more weight and authority when it's taken to the Executive Council. So while we were having these meetings with uh, stakeholders, we identified some specific challenges that Abu Dhabi faces to, the re to renewable energy deployment. First, the right that citizens feel to cheap energy, as well as the ease of access that they have to this energy, often creates resistance in lifting electricity subsidies. This cheap energy also means that consumers are really not aware of the benefits of renewable energy, and they're not engaged in energy efficiency measures. Additionally, key actors in the energy sector are not communicating with one another, even though they may be invested in deploying renewable energy. And this is creating unnecessary barriers to deploying more renewable energy. Lastly, the process for acquiring a permit 
to create a renewable energy power plant in Abu Dhabi is often unclear, and this makes it difficult for investors to break into the market. In light of this energy and political context, as well as these specific challenges that we identified, we we've produced what we feel is a very thorough and accurate uh, report that identifies these three policy tools that Abu Dhabi could use to meet the 7% goal. And these tools have been discussed before by researchers and academics for Abu Dhabi, but they've never been seriously considered by the government because the government has been so historically supportive of the oil and gas industry. The first policy tool that we've proposed is called the feed-in tariff, and this policy provides fixed rate monetary incentives for renewable energy that's fed back into the grid, and this is most often small-scale distributed renewable energy. The image on this slide shows some of the items that we feel would be necessary to make a feed-in tariff successful in Abu Dhabi. Um, some of these things are mandating en renewable energy purchases by utilities, providing low-interest loans to developers, and one of the most important is establishing periodic tariff adjust adjustments so that we can make sure that we're really hitting the, the appropriate rate. The second policy tool we've identified is a competitive bidding approach to renewable energy procurement. And this, this method is very commonly used in the region right now, and so it's fairly well established. What it does is it sets out a request for proposals for renewable energy power plants, and then it selects the lowest cost option. In order to achieve additional policy objectives, however, we've suggested that in choosing the winning bidder, Abu Dhabi not only select the lowest cost option, but that they also consider additional policy objectives like sustainability in the supply chain, water conservation of the project, and local job creation. And we feel that in doing so, they'll be able to really develop their local clean energy industry and to become a global leader in renewable energy development and intellectual property. The third policy tool we've suggested is widely used and commonly known as a renewable portfolio standard. This tool legally mandates increasing percentages of electricity come from renewable resources in specific years until an ultimate target is reached. And this chart shows how that might work in Abu Dhabi if they were aiming to for 7% or beyond. Now this policy tool often uh, includes a tradable credit mechanism, but we've suggested that Abu Dhabi use it simply as a straightforward percentage mandate because we found that in the region, top-down approaches are very successful. It's also important to note that this policy tool can be very flexible in terms of percentage numbers and in terms of developing other technologies. Um, if there are other technologies that they really want to promote, they can create additional percentage carve-out mandates for those technologies. Perhaps the most important aspect of our findings are the immediate action items that we've highlighted. These are things that we feel Abu Dhabi are specific to Abu Dhabi and that they can implement immediately. We also feel that any of these will help to facilitate the policy tools we just discussed. First, in order to overcome communication barriers amongst, amongst energy sector players, We've suggested that they hold regularly scheduled meetings where each actor can really express their own interests and where they can develop a unified energy agenda for, the, for Abu Dhabi. We've also proposed increasing tr the transparency of the licensing process for renewable energy power plants by, f by speeding up communication with potential investors. We also feel promoting citizen engagement is really important, and that can be done by making renewable energy more visible through distributed generation, um, and also by increasing energy efficiency measures. More subsidy reductions also, um, also encourage energy conservation in Abu Dhabi, and, they, uh, and reducing these subsidies also allows Abu Dhabi to take advantage of selling their resources for higher prices on the world market rather than for subsidized prices at home. And we feel that this additional revenue could then potentially be invested back in renewable energy or research and development. Perhaps our most important finding and recommendation is that there needs to be clear ownership of any target or policy that is um, developed. This will allow an agency to really take responsibility for that and to ensure its success. In our report, we gave comprehensive overviews of each of these policy tools so that the client can choose between them and in order to meet what they feel are their most important policy objectives. To present these findings in an easily understandable way, we've created a table, part of which is shown here. 
And this provides a summary of our key recommendations as well as a rough implementation timeline. Um, for example, laying out the fact that the Abu, that Abu Dhabi's Regulatory and Supervision Bureau should immediately develop a renewable energy distributed licensing scheme gives concrete steps that they can take to enable the creation of a feed-in tariff. This table really is the roadmap to Abu Dhabi's renewable energy deployment. With this roadmap, we see a bright and sunny renewable energy future for Abu Dhabi. There are some renewable energy projects right now in Abu Dhabi, like a zero carbon sustainable city and this large Shams solar power plant that you can see on these slides. These projects really give a glimpse into what a renewable energy future might look like in Abu Dhabi. We're very excited that our report will be able to facilitate real world change and for Abu Dhabi to be able to meet their 7% capacity goal and beyond. We also hope that this will be able to create a, a future for Abu Dhabi where they are a global leader in the charge for a renewable energy future. Thank you, and I can now take any questions you might have. Hi, Grace. Thanks. Um, so one of the things, at least in the U.S., that's helped the solar industry um, for distributed solar anyway, has been net metering. Has, have you guys looked into that at all for Abu Dhabi? We did, yeah. We considered net metering. Um, for those of you who don't know, net metering is another policy tool. It's similar to a feed-in tariff, whereas a feed-in tariff um, provides a fixed rate monetary incentive. Net metering actually provides the, um, the market rate for ener renewable energy that's fed back into the grid. And we did look at that um, for Abu Dhabi. But we decided a feed-in tariff was kind of a more flexible approach because you can really set that rate at what you feel is most appropriate for the level of development that you want to create. Thank you, Grace. Um, through your research, was there any types of renewable energy um, that seemed to be particularly troublesome for Abu Dhabi or potentially helpful for them in the future? That's a great question. Yeah, so um, it's been really great to be able to work with the technical team at Mazdar Institute because they did a very thorough analysis of many different types of technologies in Abu Dhabi. The main ones that they consider the most viable for Abu Dhabi are solar PV, concentrated solar, and offshore wind. Um, some of the other ones that they look at and are really excited about for the future are waste to energy because Abu Dhabi has a really big problem with waste management. But right now, just because of the upfront capital costs, it's really not that viable. Um, and some of the other ones they've looked at are like wave power and stuff like that. But it's just it's just not viable right now. Yeah. Can you talk a little more about the stakeholders and the different conflicts that came into play and sort of how your group handled that and came into recommendations from those? Absolutely, yeah. Um, our first meeting in Abu Dhabi was with the Abu Dhabi Water and Electricity Council. And um, the, the, uh, the man that we met with there was very adamant that solar is now more cost competitive than fossil fuels. And he, they actually developed a model that was, is being completed this week that will show the economically viable percentage of renewable energy that they really should be doing just purely based on economics. So what he said was, you know, there really aren't any, there's no need for policy because it's economically viable. When we met with other key stakeholders, though, we found that there are additional policy objectives rather than just lowest cost energy that they're trying to achieve. For example, this year is Abu Dhabi's year of innovation, and they're really trying to build out their clean energy sector and intellectual property to become a global leader and diversify their economy more. Thank you. 